welcome to Floyd Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Hobby Boss's brand new 148 scale. This is SU17 Fitter K. Now, it's a bit like buses, these things. Obviously, Kitty Hawk released one uh, to sort of mix reviews uh, a short time ago, and now Hobby Boss have jumped straight back in with another beautiful one. Lovely box art. To be honest, I am a bit of a Fitter fan. As you know, I do like my Russian stuff. I intend to build a lot more of it in the future, just purely because of the weathering, the colours and everything else like that. They are very, very pretty aircraft. Great little bit of box art on there like that. So, running around the box, usual thing. We've got uh, decals. It's got a shark's mouth, so that's my vote straight away. Got a little bit of photo etch showing the actual uh, the squadron down there from uh, in from '94. Okay, looking around in the box. Kit number for this one is eight one seven five eight. Okay, and a few. So we get a nice little bit of weaponry fit down in there as well, okay, as rocket pods and bombs and things. All right, so generally, we have a open up of the box. Good sturdy box as always, uh, split piece, so we've got some canopy parts and various things in here. To be honest, it's been a while since I've actually reviewed a 48 scale uh, Hobby Boss kit, so quite nice to be back into it. The usual sort of way of doing it, so down on here we've got, obviously got sprue call outs, things like that. Pretty much standard. So usual thing, starting off into the uh, nose wheel, putting the gear together. Uh, usual thing as well, we've got this thing where the side walls actually hold the gear in place. So unfortunately you are going to put that in quite early unless you're going to sort of, you know, make a, a way of fitting this down as a separate. Uh, looks like we've actually got one piece hubs unless they're rubber, but I didn't see that in the instructions, so we'll check. Okay, so we're down in that as well. And then going in with your seats, Usual thing, uh, you might want to go down the aftermarket route for it. Tub, it's quite basic. I've uh, got a mix of colours. Obviously, we have that sort of interior Russian colour, uh, to, sort of turquoise colour to do. Okay, so then putting those in, we've got decals for the side walls and for the instrument panels, things like that. But obviously, you don't have to to go through there. I'm sure the uh, colour aftermarket guys will come in with a nice bit of photo etch as well. Okay, exhaust system being put in, it's not a full length one, so you've just actually got the nozzle uh, area at the rear right up to the afterburner ring and the uh, last stage compressor, okay? So fitting those in there. And then a case of dropping these things in together. So usual thing, got the can going in the back, then we obviously got the cockpit tub, the nose wheel system fitting in, and then obviously down in here, as we can see, we've got the radar uh, and the designator uh, in the nose pod system fitted in there into the shock cone. Then right off the bat, adding some of the areas just into this fuselage section. So as you can see down in here, move that up way. Uh, we've actually got some various little aerials, you know, obviously we'll put them on afterwards. Okay, and then we've obviously got the pylons going in there. So we've got a couple of pylons being fitted down and in. Split two piece, two piece tail system going in there, a couple of little vanes put in. Tail planes going on um, and looks like twin pinned as well being fitted in so obviously fitting that big old rudder down at the top some air scoops various lumps and bumps being fitted as we can see just down there and then <clears throat> straight on to the other side going in there with the actual gear system so we've got the main gear and the doors being fitted onto that one and then putting the wings together so and we've got a nice deep uh, wheel well being fitted in there as well so some nice details and then pylons being fitted on and then the fences on the wings so this is the first part of the wing. Obviously, don't forget, this is a swing wing uh, attack jet. All right, exactly the same on the other side, as you can imagine. And then on the other side, you're going to be fitting on the actual wings. Nice big tabs, it looks like, to be fitting. This inner part of the wing sec section is going to go into that one. We've got the chaff and flare buckets being fitting, the rail system for those on both sides of it, and fitting that in. So that looks very nice. Then we've got the option over here. It looks like we've got either swept wings, okay, being fitted through. Obviously, you're going to have the uh, outer sort of aileron system being fixed in position okay nav lights going in or you can actually have the slats uh, deployed on the front and then obviously position of all sort of ailerons if you wanted to and have the wings swept forward so it's not a pivoting wing it's fixed so you'll pick which one you want which actually could be a nice little touch if you could have this in a somewhat of a loose fit so you could just change them over as you like I'm not sure that would work you probably need a bit of glue or a bit of strengthening but it is an option to go down in there Okay, so looking through, more details going into the cockpit. So we've got the uh, top part of the actual instrument panel being fitted on. That really very delicate looking uh, pitot tube uh, with all the angle attack sensors and everything else like that that they have being fitted onto this guy and the others being fitted on. And then we've got another uh, flare and chaff bucket system being put up midway up the fuselage as well. 
and that is really going to complete your model. Nice little touch with this one as well. We we'll actually get the towing dolly for it, so there's a nice little touch you can fit that in, something for your diorama guys, or just on a simple base to really add a little bit of detail. And then down in here, obviously, we're talking about the cockpit with an inner and outer frame system again, something we'll have a look about when we get into there and fitting that in. So that's another really nice touch to it. Then last up, obviously the weapons. So you're going to be picking out your weapon fit for this one. So down in here, obviously we've got to the uh, you know the uh, sort of mirror system or the multiple ejector rack fitted down there with the uh, standard AB250 bombs being fitted on. Or you can have something a bit like the old Fab 500s if you want to go a bit bigger. Then obviously we've got the rockets down here. So we've got the S24s being fitted down in there. Or you can have the nice little short range R60s or your rocket pods of the BAMs or the bigger B13Ls. Okay, and then we've got some fuel tanks standard type of drop tanks that these guys have and the little chart here showing exactly where you can hang them and where you want to put them really looks very nice okay so usual thing we've got a couple of color little sheets down in here again this beautiful uh, sort of Russian standard camo scheme for it with the light blue with the greens and browns on the top really really nice down there so we've got an Afghan one there from 89 or something a little bit earlier from 94, sorry, a little bit later in 94 with the more sort of sand tones right the way over it, just like that. Then we've got a color sheet call out, obviously, for the weapons, for the decal placements, and obviously your color call outs in there. So, one of the biggest criticisms was that the other kit, as we'll call it, um, had uh, this sort of multi uh, system with the fuselage of where it all locks together and everything else like that, which did come into a lot of criticism uh, over the months that people were putting it together. On the other hand, Hobby Boss have gone straight for a very simple one-piece fuselage system right the way through, okay, which obviously makes building it a lot, lot nicer than messing around as you were before with the others. So if we just drop this cam in just a little bit more. Uh, as you can see, really very nice, all external detail, we've got nothing on the insides whatsoever because obviously we've got all internals to this one, very, very nice looking at it, no sign of any sink marks or any distortions or anything else like in the plastic, which is really, really nice. We have got a very, very faint seam mould line running, if you guys can see it, get the camera going here, if you can see it, it's just running there and it's coming across and it sort of then goes into a panel line so it's not too bad, although now it makes the panel line slightly raised just down on this back end, okay? But from that point of view, I don't think it's anything you go completely crazy about, but um, it's not too bad. It just needs a little bit of a rub over there just to lose that, because it is noticeable. Again, it's something you look out for. You tend to find them on these kits, and lo and behold, this guy has got it, okay? So literally, it's just this section at the front you wanted to take care of. Don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up. Perhaps you can just about see it running down in here. But again, that isn't a problem per se. Beautiful detail, very fine, very, very nice. Not a great deal of riveting. There is some very light riveting, but only on the actual, some of the panels, this little reinforcement plate on the actual intake se uh, section. Uh, sorry, the, the intake before we get to the wing, I should say. Uh, it's got some riveting, but the rest of it's pretty much devoid everywhere else. No problems at all. And again, nice details. I know the camera the trouble is you have too many lights, you can't get the shadowing, but hopefully you can see there some of that beautiful detail that has been put in with these. Very nice indeed. So obviously a match pair with those. Then we can have a look at the wings. Okay, so on the wing section, again, really very nice sprue, no sign of any type of sink marks, flash, ejector pins all seem to be pretty much out of the way, no problems with those at all. Fence system all looks very, very nice on here. But generally looking around, as you can see, some nice details on all of these surfaces. You know, riveting detail and obviously recessed uh, scribing lines is, is the norm these days. But as you can see, really actually very, very nice, good quality detail right the way through. You probably could see from the underside how thin this is because you can actually get that slight shadowing. You can see this through. This is how thin that actually is uh, because this is the internal details for the inside of the wheel wells so that actually are showing through. So it just shows. Got a couple of little things you want to take care of. Just mine this up here. A little bit of flash in there. Various things off of the ejector pins can interfere with your mould but generally really nice. Very crisp, sharp, precise moulding. 
Now, we do have some stuff in here in bags. I'll tell you what, we're gonna put that to a side for one second so I've got a clue what it is. Okay, <coughs> so in here we have a very nice protected bag. Probably the biggest area I've ever seen just to have a nozzle. But there we go, all right. So generally, no problem with this sprue at all. It's very nice, very clean, crisp, precise. Again, no problem with flash or anything else on any of the parts. No sink marks, no nothing. So this is that big towing eye uh, desk down on here, or the towing dolly uh, being put down in there. We've obviously got the inner parts for the actual intake system. Um, obviously, it's only a short piece of it. You're not going to get the entire thing, but you're not going to see anything past this anyway. Okay, so no problems for that. Generally, uh, the doors, see really nice with those nice detail on the inside no ejector pins on the inside either so you don't have to worry about that this uh, system for the main wing the sort of fence system uh, which doubles up as the pylon very nicely done a couple of those on there but generally just the smaller parts as you look at them clean very crisp no problem this is that angle of attack actually to be honest that's very beautifully done that's very very fine okay this is the um, port side and the starboard one actually you know i thought that that was going to be a bit nasty you might even get away with that because that is extremely thin wouldn't take a lot just to sand it off just a little bit more if you were careful and have no problem this nozzle okay it's the internal nozzle so you are looking for the internals on it it does have a little bit of a flashy area down in there but again a bit of a scrub with a sanding stick be absolutely good to go okay next up we have Right, so down in here we've actually got the, uh, on sprue D, we've actually got the shock cone itself, obviously up here at the top, doesn't look too bad, looking at all the parts clean crisp, the hubs all look very nice, these chaff and flare buckets look really nice and tight, and the fences on the wing, uh, the slats, really nice indeed, you can see that shock cone doesn't look too bad at all, uh, it has got moulded in, you might see underneath, that is your, uh, the actual sensor uh, down on the bottom there, top of the uh, instrument panel pretty plain might need a bit more livening up a little bit of plumbing work and things like that on the rear bulkhead the afterburner uh, ring no problem at all and that last stage compressor system no problem obviously this is going to make up your internal wheel wells things like that they're very nice indeed and then generally as you can see the wheel hubs are quite nice everything is pretty much what you would expect very nicely done a little bit chunky detail perhaps but i'm getting really picky now because i have to uh, for down in here for the insides of the the actual slats uh, on the front but again that's being uber picky instrument panel is devoid but i can imagine i would probably wait for a couple of months and let the aftermarket guys jump on this and come up with a nice color photo etch set which will finish this kit off and give it everything it needs last up we've actually got down in here the rest of the um, the engine nozzle itself, you see full depth internal detailed as well, no problem with that. Beautifully done, very, very nice indeed. Okay, so moving along to some of the smaller parts. So this is that wing system where you can pick folded or uh, deployed. Okay, so out on here, this will be the uh, deployed pairing, if you like. Again, nice details, you can probably see on all of those. Uh, obviously you've got all those access panels on the underside and then obviously just a few on the top side really nice indeed so that's all ready to have the sort of slack fitted in tiny little bit of flash but i'm really getting picky now okay just on there but generally the rest of it's clean no problems whatsoever so that's very nice uh can we find the other one or do we go past the other one there's it one. okay or you can have the swept version so here's your swept version off Okay, and again, straightforward, exactly the same, but as you can see, it has got the cutouts then for the sweat look, which is really nice indeed, that you can just pop around it and see all those details in there. Again, looks to be very nice, nice good size, um, actually locating pins and everything else, but the ejector pins are all flush and out of the way with no problem at all. Okay, the rudder and tail in one, Okay, so unfortunately posing it may be a little bit of a problem, but we can see no problem with that at all. Some nice details. Okay, catch it in the light, see those details coming through. 
Really good indeed. This is the internal frame, which actually is a really nice touch with this, that something a little bit different we haven't seen before, and not in this scale, that it actually comes with the internal framework. So you can paint all of this and then just sandwich it into the um, actual uh, clear part underneath. So you don't have to mask the inside to paint it, which is absolutely fantastic. Bottom of the actual uh, tub, so the cockpit, some nice little bits of detail down in there. As I said, pretty devoid, I would wait just a couple of weeks, I imagine, before the uh, aftermarket guys jump on this with uh, gusto. Okay, so you obviously, being Hobby Boss, do get a full complement of weapons, which is nice. So I'm not going to run completely over these because they tend to be generic. But down here, we've obviously got a uh, pod, uh, some type of um, in sort of intelligence gathering pod, shall we say, uh, some type of tarp system, very much what you would expect. Nicely done, good detail, loads of riveting detail on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it is fully, fully detailed, as you can see. That's actually very nice, this underside of it as well, with that riveting detail. Something a little bit different if you wanted to do sort of the, uh, the recce bird with all the recon gear on it instead of uh, sort of in the uh, bomber roll. Something like that, that's really nice. Okay, and we'll have a look in this one, as I say, but the others I don't think we really need to uh, go overboard in there. So, this one down in here, one piece molded for the R60s, these little, um, is it the adder for the R60? Uh, really very nice again. The bombs, uh, sorry, fuel tanks, very, very nice indeed. No problem with those. The vein system on the front, maybe a little bit thick. You could sand it down though, it wouldn't take too much to get that sanded down to make it look nice. Uh, and again, the actual sway braces and the bits like that, they look quite nice as well, so no problem with any of those. This guy down in here, we won't get it out because it is pretty much a generic pack as you can see. So down in here, you've got the smaller sort of, you know, 250 pound bombs, 500 pound bombs, and then uh, we've got the uh, big uh, multiple ejector rack stand on here as well with all the sway braces, which said is pretty much standard on all their 48 scale stuff. Last up, we'll grab these because I haven't actually seen these. Uh, down in here we've actually got the rocket pods, nice to see they're fully opened up, they are hollow, you can see straight through them which is nice, uh, so we've got the actual rocket pods down in there and the other sort of larger ordnance, no problem at all with those, some very nice detailing, clean, again great for your spares, pox and stuff like that. So we've still got in here is the seat. Again, I'm sure the aftermarket ones will jump in with a replacement seat if you wanted it, but actually I think with some harnesses on here, it's molded in on here, but I think some separate ones would look really nice. Okay, but there's plenty of aftermarket uh, Russian seats out there if you wanted to go down that route. We do get some tyres. So again, um, to be honest, talking about this last night, we were saying how tyres, they're not like they used to be. Uh, I, you know, I don't mind them. Say you can just sand them with a sanding stick and then rub them with your hand and you'd be absolutely fine. But again, these don't look too bad. They've got some nice detail on the sides, that sort of Russian walls that they have on there. And the nose one, again. As long as they're the right sort of size and they fit in without a gap all the way around, I can't really see a problem with them whatsoever. Now, let's have a look in this little package to see what it is, because I don't know. Okay, so what we're going to do is... Try and get in here without damaging whatever the precious item is. It's the clear part. So just down in here, we've actually got the clear windscreen, and that is beautifully done. That is really very, very sharply done. That uh, front windscreen. Again, these for the recce pods. Obviously, wings, nav lights, and uh, heads-up display area, uh, and obviously we've got the landing lights in there as well. Beautifully done. That is actually very, very nice indeed. And then we are hoping down here to have the main canopy which I don't know if we can slide this little guy out. We can. Again, this is what we were saying, how this will be a sandwich system. So you just need to mask the outside and then you've obviously got the plastic one, which is gonna go right in the inside there. But generally, as you can see, very, very clear, very little distortion in that. Beautifully done. We have said it before, but Hobby Wars really seem to be nailing to in clears because they are extremely, very, very nice. Now, last up, we haven't looked at it yet. Buried at the bottom of the box. We've got the decals, so I don't know if these have been our weathered decals or plain. 
looks like they're a little bit of both because the yellow looks like it's slightly faded if we're honest but the stars definitely aren't uh, and again some nice markings registration is absolutely fine registration is just where obviously usually these are silk print, uh, printed on so it's various levels of color just making sure they all line up and they're in alignment so there's no ghosting or shadowing or sort of blurring of any of the decals and these are absolutely perfected no problem at all obviously the smaller stuff i can't read it but it's generic um, so no problem with that at all very very nice so there we go again this particular aircraft has had a lot of talk about shall we say on the internet some of it i think completely unfounded uh, other sides of it i thought it totally correct this is a different way of doing it obviously kitty hawk is going to be judged event against this particular kit from my point of view, looking at it, and having seen both kits now, I haven't built either of them. This is purely from a looking at them point of view. This looks a lot easier to go together. It looks more straightforward uh, and everything else like that. So from my point of view, if I was gonna be building one, I'd probably go down the Hobby Boss route, but then that's because I'm lazy and don't like doing loads of seam lines and stuff like that. But generally, it looks to be a very, very nice kit. And usual thing, as I say with all of this, if you're a Russian nut and you love it, you will love this kit. It's beautifully done, great markings, great weapons, and really nice getting things like the towing dolly for it as well, because normally we don't see that type of thing. So congratulations to Hobby Boss, another winner, I'm sure. So that's their 148 SU-17 Fitter.